you cannot date until you get married. <laughs> yeah, that was the only dating advice that I got from my very strict immigrant Nigerian parents when at 16 I asked them if I could date like all my other American friends. And all I got back was, Yvonne, you cannot date until you get married. What, what, is, what does that even mean, guys? Guys, <laughs> how can I get married if I never date? And more importantly, how can I have sex if I never date? But what my father managed to do in that very short sentence, other than utterly confuse me, uh, is instill the fear of God and his belt uh, in my life. So I decided, you know what? When I turn 18, I'm going to be an adult, OK? I'm going to be an adult, and I can make adult decisions, and I don't need permission to date because I'm going to be 18. Also, when I turn 18, I'm going to get married. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have sex. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have sex when I turn 18. And I had it all planned out, y'all. I was going to have rose petals. I was going to have candles, a water bed if I was lucky. And Maxwell's This Woman's Work was going to be playing in the background. Yes, because Love and Basketball is my favorite movie. But when I got to high school, all the girls kind of crushed my dreams because they were like, um, Yvonne, your expectations are way too high for your first time. You should be lucky if you get the back seat of some guy's car or the basement apartment in some dude's mama's house. What? Do you see my face? That, that was not the will of Jesus for my life. Like, that was not going to be what I told my daughter about my majestic first time. So I waited. I was like, I can wait. I waited it out. And sure, because I was never one to buckle under peer pressure. But year after year, I slowly realized that I was becoming the only member of the V Club. That's cool. That's cool, because by senior year, I had even identified my accomplice. That's right. He was a black and Puerto Rican papi. Hola, mi gente es latino, pero tu sabes. And he was a freak, too. I was like, look at Jesus. He coming through. I was like, this wait is going to be worth it. And I told him the game plan. I was like, all right, check it, check it. All right, I'm 17. OK, I got a couple more months to my 18th birthday. It's going down. Candles. Water bed. <laughs> rose petals. Like, I, I laid it down. I, think, I thought he was down for the count. I thought he was down for it. Um, until my freshman year of college, 17, with about three or four months left to go to my 18th birthday. And I realized that there were other girls who did not have the same timeline as I did. Um, and they uh, projected their offer to him, and, and, he, and he took them up on, on their offer. And, and that's cool, because I said, you know what, Yvonne? You are in college, I am sure. There is a pretty young thing who has work study, so he could afford these uh, rose petals that you're looking for, <laughs> <laughs> and whose roommate goes home on the weekend, so you can get your set and sheets, girl. And then life has a funny way of interrupting your plans, because one fateful Thursday, a friend of mine invited me to a campus Bible study. You know, I love Jesus. He cool. You know, why not? Let's go. <laughs> I got to the Bible study, and there was this beautiful minister. She was a, a meth student, and she talked about how she was 25 and waiting until marriage to have sex. Hold up. What? Time out. Jesus, what, what happened? Who hurt her? I don't understand. Why would anybody do this? This is unacceptable. I, mm, what? <laughs> I don't, I'm not here for this. This is not why I came. <laughs> And I sat there with my arms crossed like, no, I don't, well, I, this is not the will of Jesus for my life. And I, as I listened, though, I, she talked about just how much God was so important to her and he had done so much for her that this ask was not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. And I was like, okay, what else you got? And then she kept talking and her passion for Christ was really intriguing because she called God daddy. I would never had heard anybody call him daddy. Like that was very intimate and very personal. And so I found myself going like this to like this. And by the time I knew it, y'all, I'd been bamboozled by Jesus. <laughs> I got saved at 17. I told him I was going to wait till 18 and he swooped in at 17 and now 33. <laughs> We're still waiting. We are still waiting. But it's all good, though. You know, I, I, I don't mind the wait. Thank you. I don't mind the wait, but my parents are singing a different tune now. Um, <laughs> when I remind them of their once, you know, sound dating advice, what I get back is, Yvonne, 
time waits for nobody. You are no longer a spring chicken. You are ripe for marriage. Right. That's what they call me, guys. Like I'm a mango. I love this, this other one. Even when I went to church today and I lit five candles for you. Yes, maybe Jesus will see one of them and send you a husband. So who needs Tinder? You got a candle lighting African mama, okay? That's, that's how this game works. Uh, but you know, I, I, I don't really, I don't, I don't mind the wait because here, here's, here's the thing about it. Like I joke around a lot, but what the wait does is read out the riffraffs. A lot of people think the weight is actually keeping me from my Prince Charming, but what the weight actually does is, is, is keep me away from these dudes. But what do what you mean by commitment, though? Like, commitment, commitment? Yeah, I don't, I don't have time for the foolishness, y'all. And so, for me, if you ask, do I want to have sex? Of course I do. Like, today, like, right now, if you're here, like, let me know. <laughs> But that's just, a short, that's just a short comfort, right? And sometimes you got to sacrifice short-term comforts to get long-term quality relationships that I want. Yeah, that's, that's my face. That's the, the short-term comfort look. Like, it ain't always sexy, y'all, but it is sexy. Um, and so here's the... And so for me right now at 33, what the weight is, the weight is powerful, it's disciplined, it's focused, it keeps the main thing the main thing. Um, and... I, I know some of you are all listening like, well, Yvonne, this sounds really good. Um, however, I'm not about this way into marriage life. Um, so, ooh, <laughs> you got anything else for me? I do. I do. I'm not here trying to sell you on way into marriage. I'm, I, listen, my 17-year-old self is right there with you like, please stop talking right now. Please, no. But here are some things that I do feel that you can wait for in a relationship. I feel like every relationship has things that are important that you can't wait for. Um, and so I'm going to give you five things. One, wait on the person who sees you for you and loves you regardless. Because here's the real. We all got issues, y'all. <laughs> like, I didn't think I had issues, because I mean, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> on the surface, there was no, like, seven-year relationship that left me hurt, drinking red wine on a Thursday and, drinking pop and eating popcorn like Olivia Pope. But we have issues. And it wasn't until a fight with a friend of mine that let me know, like, I got some, some deep, like, childhood issues that I don't even know about. And that's the thing about wounds. You don't know you have them until they're scratched, and then you realize the scab is still fresh. So I had to dig deep. I had to dig deep, and I had to unearth some ugly. But I believe that there is somebody that is willing to get ugly with you down in the mud and work on getting healed, he, his own healing or their own healing, on your, on your own journey to getting healed. So y'all can do it together. Don't judge somebody else's process because you're in a process as well. Number two, wait on the one who sees value in what you value. When you meet me, you know three things off the bat. I love to laugh. I love being Nigerian. My people, where you did? There it is. <laughs> and I love Jesus. If you spend a little bit more time with me, you know I'm a giver. I'm a connector of people. I'm an encourager. You know, I went on a date one time with this guy um, who was like, uh, you know, Yvonne, I just think that, you know, in every relationship, we need a, you know, compromise. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I can compromise on what movie we see in the movie theater, y'all. I can compromise on whether or not we eat Chinese or Indian today. But a core value, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? And now I'm not talking about, like, yo, this dude likes Snicker bars and I like Babe Ruth. That's not it. Okay, I'm, I'm talking core, core values. And I looked at him and I said, well, you know, and he, of course, that was his sales pitch to get me to try and sleep with him. And I said, babe, you know, it's cool if you don't value the same thing I value. We're just not going to make it. See, I don't get mad if somebody doesn't like me for me. You're just not the one for me. <laughs> All right. Number three, wait on purpose and not in fear. You know, we all know the divorce rate in America is 50%, and then you throw in the retention rate in colleges, and then black women, the incarceration rate in black men, and blah, 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 blah. It's all set in fear. It's all set to make you feel like, you ain't never going to make it, boo. Um, <laughs> but, I don't, but I don't subscribe to that, because what is, what is fear? And guys, you guys get it, too. You guys get, these girls ain't loyal, really. Are we not? Are we not? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't subscribe to fear, because what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. That's all that is. It's not real. 
I, I believe in faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. One deals in the negative, another one deals in the positive. I choose to look for the positive. And here's the thing, Jay-Z said men lie, women lie, numbers don't. That's cool, you can have your numbers. I got a different set of numbers. 7.5 billion, that's how many people are on planet Earth. 7.5 billion, you mean to tell me that with 7.5 billion, there is one dude that, one dude has to have my name on him, okay? I don't know where he at. <laughs> I may not have even traveled to where he's from. Show of hands, has anybody ever here been to Wichita, Kansas? Exactly, my boo might be in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Y'all know? <laughs> and and, and, and we're, we're not even, we're just dealing with one state. Has, has anyone been to every county in, 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 in Pennsylvania or in Maryland or, no. So there's a whole wild word out there and then we're not even factoring international. Who's been to New Zealand? Exactly. Go to New Zealand, or your boo may be waiting for you in seat 32B, is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so tickets to Wichita, Kansas just went up. You're welcome. <laughs> Number four, wait on the one who makes you a priority. You know, we've all heard it said, you know, people make time for what's important to them. And I believe that. You know, earlier, or late last year, I was uh, in a relationship, or I was, I was getting to know this guy. You know, he started off really good, they all do. Um, started, started off really good. I, you know, I, I felt like we had a really good connection. And, you know, after a while, I realized that my communication was not getting reciprocated at the same rate that um, I desired. So I, I take a step back because, again, I don't, have to, I don't have to beg anybody to like me because I like me. Um, so I just want to show you, this was our last text message because this is what I do. You know, I, I use you as a reference on my TED Talk. Um, January 4th. He says, can I call you later? I say, yeah, sure. January 22nd? <laughs> we gonna wait 18 days? And then he says, it's not because of negligence, because you've surely been on my mind. Here's what I don't need. I don't need anybody thinking about me. I don't need anybody thinking about me without actions. Because here's what I think about. I think about cleaning my room. I do. Um, mm. Whew, here's what I don't do. I don't clean my room. Here's who's not impressed with me thinking about them, my dirty floors, okay? So I don't, I don't, I'm happy that you thought about me, but without follow through, mm, boo -boo, we're not gonna make it. <laughs> and my Angelou says, when people show you who they are, believe them. So I appreciate your, uh, your effort, but clearly I'm not a priority in your life, and that's cool because I believe that there's somebody who will make me and keep me their priority and bring balance in your life. Furthermore, you waiting 18 days to get back to me, but your Instagram is popping. <laughs> like your Snapchat is lit, but the same phone you double tap it, you can't call me back. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so let's not excuse unexcusable behavior. You are a priority and you're worth somebody who will put you at the top of their list. Now, that's not to be mistaken for, you know, being ridiculous and like wanting somebody to capitalize somebody's time. You have to have balance and, you know, have a well-rounded life yourself. Number five, wait on the man, on, on the one who meets your standards. Here's the thing about standards. Uh, they're yours. <laughs> they're yours to set as high or as low. A lot of times when you hear um, single women, you hear this said about them. Maybe you're still single because your standards are way too high. I don't know who talks like that, but that's just, that's in my mind. That's, <laughs> you know, or maybe you're still single because you're just so picky. So, like, let me, let me, standards are yours to set as high or as low, and sometimes people who can't meet your standards feel the need to diminish them. When I, was in high, when I was in high school and told my friends that my first time I wanted rose petals and candles, and they told me that, you know, no one's going to meet that. Yeah, of course, no 15-year-old who's unemployed and emotionally underdeveloped is going to meet that. <laughs> but I'm not looking to be with a 15-year-old. <laughs> That's okay. So you have to know your own standards, and you have to set them for yourself. I play a character named uh, Molly on HBO Insecure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, you know, she's been accused of being a little bad and bougie, been accused of, <laughs> of, of being a little shallow because she said she didn't want to be with uh, a, another character who didn't, and, who didn't go to college. 
and she's a corporate attorney. Hey, listen, that's your prerogative. I just don't think that it's fair to tell someone that they can't have the preferences that they want. If they choose to have different preferences, that's okay too. That's the beauty of life, we have choices. So as long as you're ordering off a menu that you can also prepare with your own ingredients, knock yourself out, boo. Um, but what I will say is I can't tell you how long you're going to have to wait for this majestic, perfect relationship, but I can tell you that the wait does not disappoint. Uh, remember the uh, minister that I met at, when she was 25? Well, at 34, she got married to that handsome young man, and he's 6'4", holds an MBA, works in corporate America. They have three, two lovely babies, and at 40, she's expecting her third. So the weight doesn't disappoint. So whoever you are that's in here that's holding on to hope, I say hope against all hope. And fight the good fight. Run the race and keep the faith. It is worth it. And it is sexy.